Have you ever wondered how to get a bunch of data together in a really quick and easy way to train an AI or to use for research? Well, Firecrawl could be a really great solution for that. Let's dig into it. Okay, thanks for joining this demo. I'm going to teach you how to use Firecrawl, which is a AI ready website crawler. If you want to get data to train a large language model, to train a bot or anything of those natures, having really good data is really important. Also, if you're just trying to do research as well, perhaps you want to gather a bunch of information from a whole bunch of different websites to have it structured in the same way to import into a table or put it into a database. Getting that data can be a real pain, particularly if you're doing it manually. Using something like Firecrawl, you're going to be able to do that plugged into an app like Cursor or Windsurf if you're a developer, or use it inside of things like Claude, or just play around in their playground. And that's what I'm going to do in this video. I've been playing around today with Firecrawl, which is a kind of web crawling extraction website. And as it says here, it can turn websites into large language model ready data, which particularly if you're building AI apps that need a lot of structured data, then this is a really good way of getting it. But it's also, I think, really useful for lots of different types of applications in kind of research as well. Basically what it does is it allows you to scrape uh, information off of a website and turn it into text in a markdown file. If you want markdown, it's just a language for organizing text. Uh, and you could also do it in JSON, which is a structured data set that you can use to feed into a language model or use in building an application or coding or programming. When you log in, you sign up and you can get a free account and you get some initial credits to play around with, which is what I'm using here at the moment. I've not paid for this yet, just using their initial credits. And you can obviously access this through a bunch of different ways. You can set up an API call yourself if you're a developer. You can call it into tools like Claude or Cursor if you're building on the desktop using an MCP tool, which is a way of calling a machine tool into a large language model. Or you could just use it in the playground. I'll show you what that looks like. So let's say that you were putting together a review for a blog post of different, I don't know, different tools you wanted to use. I'm just going to use example here of Opus Clip to demo this now. Opus Clip, if you don't know what it is, it's a web clipping tool that takes long form content, cuts it down into cool social media clips. Really useful. I use it a lot as well. And what I'm going to do is just go grab the URL here and paste it into the playground. Now, there's a bunch of different things you can do here. They have a scrape, which allows you to pull information out of the website. You can crawl it, which will look at all of the different sub pages within that website and try and crawl all of it. You can map it, which will basically attempt to pull out all the different URLs that are in the website so you can see how the site is structured. And then you could also do the extract mode. Let's just do a simple crawl for the moment. You'll see what I get here. So when we go and hit run, literally all this is doing is trying to scrape all of the information from the website, basically all of the text and emojis and stuff like that. And here you go. We've got our results here in the browser. So this is, I think, really helpful. You can see here it's got all of the information from the page and download that as a markdown file. So I can just copy it to my clipboard. And here in the Google Doc, I could just go and paste that in. And here's all the content basically from the website all downloaded, which might be helpful. It's more useful, I suppose, when you're doing things like pulling from a blog post, for example, maybe you want to get all the content out of a page here. So here we just go and have a look at this blog item from the Opus Clip team grab that full URL and come back in here to Firecrawl and give it that instead. You'll see that we get basically all of the text from the blog post pulled out into its own thing. And here you go. Here's the full text of the blog post copied down and also with all of the links and everything contained within it. So that's cool. But what if you were building something where you wanted to extract some different types of information? Well, the extraction tool, I think, is the one that's really interesting here. So say I want to go and grab a bunch of different pages within different websites, and I want to extract them all and get a response. I could use an AI tool like Cursor or one of the IDEs that are out there to edit this code and have an agent run this for me. Or I could also give this command to Claude and have it run it over in the Claude desktop app as well. But let's just say I want to extract the name, description, logo, and video of a website and generate parameters. When you generate these parameters, it's going to give you a structured JSON object and you can view it here as the original prompt. You can see what I've given it as a prompt here. So I'm just going to go grab the URL, paste it in here, or make sure to remember your HTTPS, otherwise it's not going to work. And you can actually add multiple URLs. So let's try another couple of tools. Let's also show you like Runway's URL here, runway.ml for their video generator. Why don't we add Claude as well? Okay. And we're going to click run. 
And basically what this is going to go do now is work through each one of those individual websites. And it's going to go look for the structured data that we've asked for. So we're looking for the name, the description, the logo, and a video of the website pulled from each of these sites. And it's going through, as you can see, each of the URLs independently that it can access from the top level of that domain and begin to look for that data for us. So you can see it's worked through Runway now and should now kick over and start working through Claude as well. Okay, so I'm going to give it that URL and also going to give it another Runway MLs. Well, and let's go click Run and see if it can do both of these URLs for us. So it's going to go scan through all the different URLs it can find, the top level URLs. And then hopefully once it's finished doing Opus, it will then move on and do Runway directly after that. Why would you want to do this? Because it can be a real pain of going through the web and grabbing all this data independently. You've got to go through and look for it all, copy and paste, copy and paste, copy and paste, lots of back and forth. Of course, using this, you're doing it in a dashboard, which makes things really easy to look at. And here's an example of the outputted data. So we've got formatted data here of I've got the logo file. I've got the name Opus Clip. I found the video and it's found our description. And you can go download those structured results as a JSON file and then go and look at it here. And here you go, we've got the content coming in from that page. You can see it's pulled out the data here. So pretty cool, I think super useful. Now there's loads of ways that you can use this, not just in the browser, which obviously is a useful way, but you can also go and embed this into any of the code editor tools that you might wanna play around with, particularly if you're using things like Cursor or Windsurf, or if you're using MTP tools inside of Claude, MTP tools, which is machine calling protocols, it means that you can kind of call a tool into a large language model like Claude. You could also get the code for each of these requests. So when you jump in here, you can go and scrape a web page and basically you can set this up as a Python code or a Node code if you're working on like Node.js or Next.js and grab this in and basically create an, an API call so that your application can use this as well. And you'll see the structured data that it kind of gets out of the pages here as an example too. So really easy to work with. I've been building a couple of tools with this just this morning and found that it's actually really easy to integrate as well. But yeah, you can get a lot done within this URL. Let's just say that you wanted to go and crawl the whole structure of a website. Let's just take an example here. Perhaps let's pick a small business in your local area. Let's find a plumbing business in my local area here plumbing in the UK, and let's find a local plumber's website or something simple that's got plumbing supply here, plumbing supplies. I don't know why plumbing supplies came to mind, but yeah, give you an idea. If we go and run this, basically what it will do is work through the structure of the website and break it down into its different component parts. So here it's gone and scraped the homepage. You can see the data being pulled out of the homepage here. Again, see it marked down or JSON. It's gone and found the stores page. So it's found all the store information and company pages as well. So if you want to train a large language model with this data, this is where this begins to come really helpful. If, for example, I wanted to train a language model bot, so perhaps I'm giving it as fine tuning data or as rag data, or if you're using something like 11 labs to create a conversational agent, giving it structured data is really helpful. And so if you pull this stuff out in JSON format or in Markdown format and clean it up a bit, this is a really good way of giving it a bunch of source knowledge-based material to get an AI agent trained on this data. So Firecrawl, I think really interesting thing to play around with. And I think really useful if you are trying to create this kind of structured data sets to train your LLMs with a bunch of free credits. When you kind of start in there, you get the first 500 pages for free. And then it's about 3000 for 3000 pages, which I'm sure will sort most people out monthly for $16 a month, so pretty useful. But if you're struggling to get data into training a language model or building an AI bot, this can be a really helpful plugin to use. And I've, like I say, I've already got it set up and running in my cursor instance and playing around with it in Claude as well and found it really useful. So let me know in the comments below if you found this useful or if you've got use cases for doing this and I'll see you in the next one.